Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You. Today, we're taking a look at the Hoyer Atavia Jochen Rint and comparing it to the new Hoyer Atavia. So before I start this video, I want to remind you that the, both of these watches are available on sale uh, at here at JB Hudson. The Hoyer Atavia, the new one, is available on sale brand new as they're an authorized retailer of Tog, Ho Tog Hoyer. Um, and then this one is, the original, is um, available on sale pre-owned for $16,200. So um, the, basically the purpose of this video is to not only talk about the details of this original Tag Heuer Atavia, it's the Jochen Rint version um, reference 2446. Uh, and we're, we're going to not only talk about that, but we're also going to compare it to the modern Atavia so you guys can really get an understanding of vintage versus modern watches and uh, why basically depending on your needs you would go for a modern watch possibly over a vintage watch or a vintage watch over a modern watch so um, getting into the uh, Jochen Rint um, I'll talk a little bit about the watch's kind of technical details so this one was is from circa 1966 to 1967 uh, it's called the Jochen Rint because he's a fam Jochen Rint was a famous Formula One driver that uh, had this watch, and his wife had quite a collection of watches as well. There was a recent news article about that. But um, kind of getting in, again to the technical details, it has a Valjoux 72 movement, which has an impressive power reserve of 48 hours. Um, and again, this is the reference 2446. It's got a 38.8 millimeter case in diameter, so it's a little bit on the smaller side for a modern chronograph, but uh, for around the time period that this watch was available that is right in line and I really like this size a lot. So it has a bi-directional bezel without any clicks on it with this narrow insert here and there was a series of inserts that were available on the Atavias uh, when this watch was originally made and you'd see I guess Jochen Rin, I've, I've seen multiple pictures of him with different Atavias and with different bezel configurations and dial configurations. So one notable feature of this watch is the fact that it does not have a date. I really like to see that on chronographs. I just think it adds a whole new element of minimalism that uh, you don't get with modern watches. And kind of moving into the newer version, you can see that the new version has a date and it has a completely different movement. It's the Hoyer 2 movement. Uh, this watch actually has a clear case back, which isn't really in keeping with the original um, design of the Atavia, but uh, the finishing is actually very nice on this movement. It's got a 70 hour power reserve, which is, again, very impressive, but frankly, 48 hours is um, kind of my, uh, anything past 48 hours is okay by me, and for a vintage watch, that's fantastic. Um, but in terms of the bezel for this watch, it actually has a 60 click bezel that uh, is bi-directional, so uh, it's essentially the same action as the original, but it has clicks. So it's a little bit more of a diver kind of style watch, but again, it's not unidirectional, so it isn't really a diver. Um, and the chronographs function exactly the same, so it does, this one doesn't have screw down, screw down pushers, this doesn't have screw down pushers, so to start the watch, you push the top pushers, and I'll do them both concurrently here. And then to stop the watch, you hit the top pusher again and reset using the bottom pusher. The action feels much nicer, in my opinion, on the older version, um, just due to the movement characteristics. I think it feels a little bit nicer. The modern one feels very light when you push the pushers, uh, at least when you push the reset pusher. You don't really feel it. It's kind of a strange sensation, but that's something to take note of. And again, on the modern version, you have a date at 6 o'clock. So that's, uh, in my opinion, that's not really a necessary feature and I think it would have been better if they kind of st stuck to the old version. Um, also on the new version you get faux aged loom and I, I don't really like that. I wish I wish um, kind of heritage pieces really looked as if the original pieces had just come out of the factory and what I mean by that is uh, not having things such as faux loom. It just has the original loom um, or not original but just normal white loom. Um, I think it would look much nicer and again it doesn't I mean, it, it just seems kind of fake and kind of cheating to have that full loom, um, but uh, many people feel differently than me, so that's just my opinion. So uh, I'll move on to a wrist shot of both of these watches. And on this original Atav Atavia here, this is not the original strap. This was provided by J.B. Hudson here. Um, so that is something to take note of. 
And as you can see, the 38.8 millimeter case size looks great. I have about a 6.5 inch wrist in circumference, um, just for comparison purposes. And then uh, we'll move on to the modern version, which has a diameter of 42 millimeters. It wears a little bit larger than that, in my opinion, just due to the thickness of the case. Um, but again, it would look great on most people's wrist. Uh, I have about a 6.5 inch wrist in circumference, as I said. So I'll do a comparison quick so you can see the thicknesses of these watches uh, as they relate to one another. So the cases are actually fairly similar in, in the side profile, um, but uh, again, you can see that the uh, vintage watch is much, much thinner in basically all regards, including the lug width. So if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and share and hit that notification bell if you are interested in subscribing, otherwise you're not going to get any notifications of our new videos. So thank you for watching.